Welcome back to Cinecaps. Today I will show you a drama, comedy, adventure film from 2015, titled Paper Towns. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. Quent is a kid who believes in miracles, and that at least one of them is bound to happen to each one of us. These miracles varied from hitting the jackpot, marrying a royal to reaching outer space. But his miracle was quite different, it was his new next door neighbor, Margot Roth Spiegelman. Being the same age and living in the same neighborhood, the two kids became friends. One day while cycling around the neighborhood, they found a dead man's body by the lake. That same night, an excited Margot came knocking on Quentin's window. She had some information about the man and that was enough ground for her to start an investigation. Much to her dismay, her cautious neighbor refused to break the rules and be part of her mystery solving. Years passed and Margot was still chasing after mysteries and going on different adventures. But wherever she went she left behind clues for her little sister or anyone she thought was worthy enough. Sadly Quentin wasn't one of them, the two grew apart. It is senior year, and Quentin is not convinced by his mother's attempts of persuading him that prom would be fun. This thought is pushed further away when he sees Margot with her boyfriend and group of cool friends. Quentin joins his two friends Radar and Ben. Ben is the jokester of the group, and also a flirt. He tries to ask a girl to prom but gets harshly rejected. Radar, on the other hand, is the wise one. Despite his family's attempt of breaking the record of the most black Santas in the house, he still has a serious girlfriend, Angela. Quentin has set his mind on being a straight-A student, getting into college, finding someone new, and forgetting about Margot. It was all going to plan until that one night. Margot sneaks into Quentin's room through his window. She asks to borrow his mom's car, because her parents were used to her late-night unexpected adventures, so they made sure to hide their car keys. Margot also needs the confused Quentin to be her getaway driver to deal with her nine problems of the night. Quentin asks if her boyfriend, Jace, can't help instead. But when Margot says ex-boyfriend, Quentin is put under a spell and then the two are in the car driving into an unforgettable night. They first head to BJ's to get some supplies for the plan. While moving around the aisles Margot asks Quentin what he intends to do. And so Quentin reveals his grand plan of going to college, being an oncologist, getting married, and having kids by 30. Adventurous Margot finds that boring and tells him that he doesn't have to wait 12 years to find happiness. Once the shopping is done, Margot reveals her master scheme of the night, getting revenge on her boyfriend who has been cheating on her for months with one of her best friends. Other so-called friends would get their share of the revenge as they knew about the ongoing ordeal and kept it from Margot. First stop, Becca's house. Margot calls Becca's father letting him know that his daughter is having some intimacy in the basement. The angry father comes down to haunt the man his daughter is sleeping with. He jumps out of the window just right on time for Quentin to take the most embarrassing picture of the most popular kid in high school, and also Margot's ex-boyfriend, Jace. While Becca is in a chaotic argument with her dad, the two heroes of the night climb to Becca's room. Margot leaves the traitor a smelly fish in her closet, a sticky note, and sprays her signature M. Next stop Lacey's. Margot wraps her car in plastic wrap marking it as a wrap for their friendship. Third and last revenge spot, Chuck Parson, Jace's best friend. That one gets a shaved eyebrow. Exhilarated Quentin, who usually sticks to his comfort zone, just had the best night of his life. Margot suggests one last stop to celebrate their successful night, the Sun Trust Building. Quentin refuses at first thinking there is no way they could get in without breaking the law, which he is not intending to do, but Margot knows the guard who lets them in. They go up to a floor high enough for them to enjoy the breathtaking view of the city. Margot says that the city is pretty from afar but it's uglier up close, just like everything else. Quentin says that it's not the case for her. Compliment dodge successfully. Margot points out that this is a paper town full of paper houses, paper streets. In her 11 years of living there, she hasn't met anyone who cared about something that truly matters. Quentin tries not to get offended by that and asks Margot for a dance as jazz music plays in the background. Hoping that this night will be the start of new beginnings for him and Margot, Quentin asks if things will be different the next day. Margot replies with a tight hug and insists that Quentin should not stick to his comfort zone. The next day, Quentin is filled with the hope of having a chance with Margot. Just as he is imagining his utopian scenarios, Jace pushes him against a locker. But Quentin doesn't allow Jace to threaten him, showing him the picture from last night. Quentin's next move never happened because Margot disappeared, she never came to school after that night. When Quentin comes back home he finds Margot's parents at his house, alongside a couple of detectives. They ask Quentin when he's last seen her and if he has any idea about her whereabouts. The boys are hanging out in Quentin's room, talking about prom, Ben's imaginary girlfriends, and Radar who is saving his intimacy with Angela till after graduation. 
Quentin comes back from the restroom and before going back to his seat he notices a poster in Margot's window. They head to Margot's house for further investigation. Her younger sister opens the door saying that her parents are at the mall and she can't let the boys in because Margot doesn't like to have strangers in her room. Still, she complied after Quentin handed her some money. Quentin finds the album corresponding to the poster on the window. Ben links that to a book that Quentin takes home. The senior high schooler is reading the book and picking up clues. The next day, they came across Lacey in the school's hallway. Margot's ex-best friend clarifies that she was wronged, she had no idea about Becca and Jace. Picking up the clue from the book, unscrew the locks from the doors, Quentin goes back to Margot's room, bribing her sister once again. But no clues were behind the locks. In fact, he found the clue behind his door jam. It is an address. He calls Radar to go right away but he declines saying it is a sketchy neighborhood and besides, he has plans with his girlfriend Angela. The following morning the boys skip school for the first time, and head to the address. It is an abandoned shop with different racks and road atlas magazines. Auto wall is written, you will go to the paper towns and you will never come back. Back in school, the straight A student missed a pop quiz while going on his little adventure the previous day. Quentin bumps into Lacey who asks him if there's any news about Margot. She also notifies him that there is going to be a party at Jace's and that everybody is going. After class, Quentin goes back to the abandoned mart. He drifts to sleep and has a dream about Margot. A phone call from a drunk Ben wakes him up, Radar takes back the phone and asks him to come since there might be clues in Jace's house. When he goes to the restroom to take a leak, he finds Lacey sitting by herself in the bathtub. She asks him to join her and they have a heartfelt talk about Lacey's issues. Quentin goes to Jace's room and finds a road atlas magazine like the one in the mart. But this one had written on its first page, property of Mrs., it was Margot's. The magazine has a torn page. The boys go back to the shopping center and they sing the Pokemon theme song to get over their fear of getting in that dark sketchy place. Lacey, who has been following them since they left the party, joins the search. Quentin finds the missing map and it leads to a glow, in upstate New York. It is a paper town, meaning nobody lives there, but when Radar checks Wikipedia he sees a recent edit, stating population, 1. Quentin is now convinced Margot is there and Ben encourages him to go there to look for her. And so Lacey and the two boys join as well. Before starting their road trip, Radar asks them to make a stop by Angela's house. And so, Angela ends up joining the group for their adventure. On the road, Radar is making calculations to be back in time from prom. Four is the number of stops they're allowed to make, but Ben, who drank a lot of beer the night before is about to ruin their plan. Lacey offers some cans for him to do his business, but that does not end well. So they have to stop by the nearest gas station to fill up on gas, get snacks and t-shirts for the damages done by Ben, all in six minutes, and an extra 10 seconds to run back to the car. Baby driver is the cashier behind the counter trying to make a move on Lacey. He surely could have made their 26-hour trip faster. Quentin and his crew are back hitting the road. It's nighttime and Quentin is looking back at his friends and talking while driving. He doesn't notice a cow on the road, so Ben grabs the steering wheel and spins the car. They have to wait till morning for assistance but they thank Ben for his heroic move. Quentin, Radar, and Ben are sitting and reminiscing on their days as high schoolers and that's gonna be the last time for a lot of things. Just when nostalgia gets the best of them, the girls join saying they can't sleep. Angela takes Radar on a walk while Lacey stays with Ben as Quentin goes back to the car. Lacey asks Ben to go to prom with her. Radar finally tells Angela about his family's secret of Black Santa's collection, and they end up having the intimacy they've been saving for after graduation. Radar ends up telling the boys about it the next morning, which makes Angela win the bet she did with Lacey. They finally arrive at their destination, but no sign of Margot. They look around but still nothing, no Margot nor any new clues. The guys suggest that they need to go back as soon as possible if they want to make it to prom, but Quentin is acting stubborn. He's convinced that Margot will show up. Ben tells him that just because he's not interested in prom doesn't mean that it's meaningless for everybody. Radar also highlights the fact that it was not only because of Margot but this trip was meaningful to all of them since it's probably going to be their first and last road trip together. But for Quentin, it was all meaningless if he didn't find Margot. So they all go back, leaving Quentin behind. After losing hope, Quentin buys a bus ticket back to Orlando. As he is browsing through the snacks at the mart he catches a glimpse of a girl passing by. He goes outside and it is indeed Margot. She is surprised as to why Quentin is there, and how he found that place. Turns out, it wasn't a treasure hunt game with all the clues she left behind. She only left them, as she always does, to let people know she was okay. But not with the intention to get anyone to follow her. 
Quentin is taken aback by the sudden realization and he ends up confessing his love to Margot. Margot invites Quentin for a drink to explain things better. She was planning to take this leave after graduation but her cheating boyfriend made her despise everything about that place, and so she put her plan to action right away. The Margot Roth Spiegelman everyone knew was just a fantasy. In reality, she was just a paper girl who came to a paper town to have time to think, learn about herself and who she really is. Quentin was her first partner in crime and that night, she wanted to make it her last. She apologizes for misleading Quentin, but he thanks her for it, since she paved the path for a lot of new experiences. Before parting ways she invites him to join her, but he declines. Margot was not the miraculous myth he thought her to be, she was just a lost girl trying to find herself. Quentin refutes the belief he had at the beginning, not everyone is bound to have a grand miracle. But that doesn't stop them from living amazing experiences and meeting exceptional people, the key is noticing before it's too late. The movie ends. Make sure to subscribe and turn on the notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.